The next pillar in our framework is academia and this pillar is something that you can kind of modify to best suit your achievements and what you have to show. Basically the academia pillar can be split up into two broad categories intracurricular and supracurricular. And these things can be further split up into achievement and engagement. Let me now go on and explain this in a little bit more detail, starting off with the intracurricular academia. One aspect of intracurricular academia are the things that you've achieved. So these are the things that we call intracurricular academic achievement. Examples of this are any prizes you've won at school for best exam performance or any scholarships that you might have got. This section is a really great opportunity for you to showcase the things that you might have earned within the curriculum. Of course, it's not a necessity to mention this, so don't worry if you don't really have anything, but if you do, it is nice to put in there to support your application. Another aspect of intracurricular academia is intracurricular academic engagement. This section allows you to talk about the A-level curriculum and the subjects that you might be doing and talk about the skills that it has given you and how it has better prepared you for the uni course. Like for example, further maths helping you with problem solving skills. So to quickly summarize intracurricular academia, it allows you to talk about any achievement you have within the curriculum, for example, winning a prize for the best exam performance. And it also allows you to talk about academic engagement, based an opportunity for you to talk about any impressive A-level subjects that you're doing and talk about the skills you've gained from that and how it's going to help you in the future to study that uni degree. Now let's move on and talk about the other side of the academia pillar, which is supracurricular academia. Supracurricular academia refers to things you've got involved outside of your normal curriculum, but related to the uni subjects you want to study. Just as with intracurricular academia, supracurricular academia can also be split up into two sections of achievement and engagement. So examples of supracurricular achievements can be any gold awards that you might have won at any Olympiads or any medals you've won for debating competitions. And supracurricular engagement is essentially anything outside of the normal curriculum that you've got involved that's linked to the subject that you want to study. So that might be things like writing an extended essay outside of the normal curriculum, but still related to the subject you want to study. Now, as you might have realized, this sounds awfully similar to the academic engagement we spoke about in previous lessons. And to be honest, this is exactly the same thing, but developed to a greater extent. Talking extensively about supracurricular academia, your achievements and engagement may not suit every single university University, but definitely for Oxford, this is what they put most of the emphasis on. So to quickly summarize supercurricular academia, this is essentially a section for you to talk about the things you've done outside of the normal curriculum, but it's still related to the subject you want to study. And you should split this up into anything impressive that you've achieved, like winning gold at a chemistry Olympiad or anything that you've just been involved with, for example, writing an extended essay. Now let's take a look at these ideas in action and see how we can word them. As you know, this complete personal statement masterclass is completely free for you to watch right here on YouTube. But if you're like me and you prefer this information in the written format, then you might like to check out my ebook by clicking on the link somewhere up here or in the description below. This 100 page book concisely contains everything you'll need to write to your very own personal statements using genuine Oxbridge examples. I've written it to be easy to read and designed it to be easy on the eyes to help you access all the key information in the quickest way possible. And you can use the code ULTIMATE which will give the first 100 people 50% off the book. On top of that, everyone who buys the book will get 50% off the full personal statement video masterclass, which features 20 extra lessons covering how to structure the personal statement, how to get going, how to cut down, what pitfalls to avoid, and lots and lots of worked examples, all of which will help you craft your very own expert personal statement. Now, back to the lesson. So in the previous lesson, we got introduced to the pillar of academia and saw how it could be broadly split up into intracurricular and supracurricular academia and also saw how it can be further split up into achievement and engagement. Let's now take a look at some specific examples. This is an example of intracurricular achievement. My ability to maintain a consistently high academic performance whilst juggling all of my extracurricular activities and positions of responsibility has earned me several scholarships and taught me valuable skills of determination, time management and hard work. This is a great example to show how they managed to perform really well academically whilst juggling all of these other things on the side. Now, this sentence works really well only because they've linked it to a key quality. If they just kind of said, oh, look at me, I have 
have loads of scholarships and academic achievement, it doesn't really mean much or add anything to the application because the universities already have all of your scores, your past grades as well as your predicted grades, so they don't really need to have this extra bit to say, oh look at me, I'm smart. They already know that. So if you are going to talk about intracurricular achievement, always link it to a key quality like how it shows determination, resilience, or time management. Let's now take a look at an example of intracurricular engagement. I feel that the skills for communicating with a limited vocabulary are akin to the skills of explaining complex concepts, something I have learnt through my studies of AS Spanish this year. This is a great example that identifies the key skills that they've gained from their A-level subject and how it's going to help them in the future to become a better doctor. Let's now move on to supercurricular academia, which should really be the main focus anyway. So here's an example of supracurricular achievement. I also took the Cambridge Chemistry Challenge and was ranked first nationally. I thoroughly enjoyed the residential camp where I learnt more about pharmacology. Now this sentence shows something pretty impressive about the person. But to be honest, it could have been developed a little bit more. They haven't really linked it to a key quality or any sort of reflection. They could have very easily gone on to link it to how this showed determination, resilience and ability to achieve things which are skills that are going to help them become a better doctor in the future. But to be honest, it's quite likely that the word count kind of stopped them from doing this and to be honest that's absolutely fair. But hopefully you can learn from this quote that you should talk about your super curricular achievement and you should try to link it to a key quality where possible but you can get away with things if word count is tapped. Here's another example of super curricular achievement. Reaching the national finals of the RSE analytical competition, gaining a silver award in the Cambridge Chemistry Challenge and a gold award in the senior UKMT Challenge have allowed me to overcome scientific challenges beyond the confines of my A-level curriculum. This is a great sentence that demonstrates a lot of super curricular activities and they've also gone on to link it to a key quality of allowing them to overcome challenges. But this again, Again, could have been made even better if they linked it back to medicine. Let's now take a look at an example of supracurricular engagement. Furthermore, I regularly read the New England Journal of Medicine for articles on ethics and topical issues, leading me to organize debates under my elected role as debating secretary, which have developed my ability to take prudent decisions under pressure. Now, this is a fantastic sentence that shows engagement with medicine at a higher level. Reading something like the New England Journal of Medicine is at a very high academic level. That in itself is quite impressive, but they haven't stopped there. They've taken it further and linked it to the things they've done as a result of reading these articles, things like starting up debating, and they've also linked it to the key qualities and skills they've learnt as a result of that. For example, making prudent decisions under pressure. So to summarise, the academia pillar is a very important space for you to showcase all of your academic achievement. You should try your best to focus on the supercurricular academia as much as possible over the intracurricular academia, but if you do not have enough of the supercurricular academia, by all means dabble into the intracurricular academia and see what skills you've gained from studying within the A-level curriculum. Now let's move on to the next lesson.